Hey there, Geralt of Riffia. What do you want? Me? Not a thing. <laughs> Name's Handsome Jacques, and I've already got it all. What I wonder is if there's anything you'd need. What can you get me exactly? Exactly? <laughs> anything a patron of this little auberge might desire. From decent fiddles that won't stew your innards to a dab of fisty to make you fly. Even brought in a slinky piece of arse once. A boarder claimed to suffer from glandular overactivity or some such. You see, out there beyond the walls, I'm a lowly dog's body. But here, in the kingdom of the clink, I'm the cling. Can't readily think of anything. Come now, mate. We all need something. You've just not been in here long enough to know. You know me? How? No. That's a stretch. No, I wouldn't say that, no. But I do know they've assigned you to the laundry, same as me. And I know what you're in for, your dastardly deed. Then again, I know that about every jester who winds up here. Hmm. Kind of curious to know what you know. Or think you know. The Duquesa hired you to find the butcher of Beauclair. And you did, but then you let him butcher dear Anarietta's sis. Lucky, then, you managed to cut the murderer down. The court could very well cast a kinder eye on your case. Then this brute simply vanished. Dropped off the face of the earth. Though in his case, turned to vapor might be the better phrase. Hmm. Seem pretty well informed. Best informed mutt in this kennel paws down. Duquesa's cross, no doubt, while you await your trial. Though she never seemed concerned for her sister before. Since you seem to know so much, tell me one last thing. My sentence. What'll it be? <laughs> None can tell you that. Anarietta's a fickle cocotte. There's just no knowing which teach she's like to flesh. But I'd advise against escape. You're a prisoner among many now. Take flight, though. Make it out. Public enemy number one. Why'd they lock you up? Ah, uh, hodgepodge. I had no domicile, but had to winter somewhere, so I robbed a shopkeeper. Couldn't have made a worse mistake. The penalty was a fine, an amount I couldn't pay, so they swished it to lashes, meted out on my bum. After that, I shifted course, started pinching bigwigs' noses. Cut the tail of Count Beauvieux's steed, got a year and a half for that. My next exploits had to be grander, even greater wrongs. So I carefully chose my victim, Marshal de la Steak. Filled his cask with dung from between my very own cheeks. That got me three years of free room and board. I'll pull another prank as soon as they let me out. Made it a career. It's become my way of life. We gonna report for this laundry duty? Rather get it over with. Away we go. Personally, I'm pleased we're assigned to it. Those rags stink like sick in the sun, but you get used to it. And when you're working, you get more bread. Don't get my dandy. I've no clue. Because you would get better off. Laundry's the most important the corner of this coat. Take it get away, remove it. You're talking about it. Right. From the rest. I should. Terrible. Might look nice on my wall.
Stop your ogling. This is no cabaret. Will you play or not? What's the stake? Look at this. Not two fleece to his name and he asks about stakes. You can bet those racks you're wearing. What'll I get if I win? Bread. I put some aside for Stefan, but it won't kill him to go hungry. Who's Stefan? None of your rotten business. A rat. So, playing? Another time, maybe. So, off puff puff with you. Why not? Lay them out then. You sure bum botched that. You're too dumb to win at jailhouse, Gwent. Entitled to your opinion. That's no opinion. That's a fact. Now hand over the rag. I'm done playing you. Waste of my diddling time. Mm, you're big. You're bad, Wolf. Would you be my lifting buddy? Why not? Lay them out then. Stefan will have to go hungry. Sorry. Oh, look at that. He's sorry. No one else will play with you in this coop. And be careful not to slip on any soap. Oh, I will. I haven't had a speck of trouble with that sausage snapper since. No right. Learned his lesson. That was. Pack the dirty rags in the tub. I'll see to the suds and water. Your aged meat had half of two songs galloping to the pretty. That's because our courtiers have given us some colicky newborns. Should have sold your swamp to peasants. Daft. First, peasants make their own food. Take the stick and stir the rags. Water's almost boiled. We here. The guardian of gutter snipes locked in the clink. How did that happen? My, my. What could the Duchess's favorite have done to deserve this? Back off. I'm busy. Hear that? The laundry wench is busy. Yet I fear we have a matter to resolve. Remember our meeting, good black bodyguard? You go ahead and cheat. I'll be back once you're done. Huh. Thanks for sticking around to help, Jacques. You're in the coop, mate. Only one thing counts here, survival. Folk don't stick their necks out for anyone besides themselves. Oh, oh. He left you all alone. Worry about yourselves. You tried me once already, remember? Didn't work out well, far as I recall. Why tempt fate? We're changed men. Prison does that to you. And you're the one who put us here. Oh, we've been dreaming of this. A miracle by which you would land in here. 
And voila! Sometimes dreams do come true. Seems fools never learn. Let's get this over with. Grab your washboards, boys! Let's show this kid who does the scrubbing around here! Come on. Be constructive. Make yourselves useful. Yes, we should see to the wash, or they'll put us in confinement. Hey! The mutants trying charms on us. Can't you see? Your tricks won't work here, lad. You cannot mesmerize all three of us at once. Grab yourselves, washboards, boys. Circle him! Now, now, front the gate! What is going on here? Nothing. I'm not asking you, but the one on the floor. Have you anything to say? I slipped on some soap. You slipped on soap? Lots of soap here. It is a laundry. Loud, no. that <clears throat> kind of beating feast oh. is food. What is going on here? Is something not in order, sir? Why is this man on the floor? Perhaps you should ask him that. Why are you lying there? Taking a rest. First day in the laundry. Didn't realize it could be so tiring. Harlots, brutes. Solitary for the lot of you. You'll have ample time to consider. Think about the choices you've made in life. I'll make certain of it. Didn't do anything to deserve solitary. Shut it! Milton was my cousin. You let him die. Was the Duquesa's coin not enough? Did you expect more to save a good man's life? Arrived too late. Nothing I could do. And when the beast tore apart the Duquesa's sister? Too late then, too? Were it up to me, you'd have hanged already. And don't you try any witcher tricks on me. You will end oh so badly if you do. Here of your own free will, Stefan? Or did they lock you up too? Bet you're thinking about food. What you'll eat once you're free. Mutton leg. That's what I'm dreaming of. Well roasted on the outside. Nice and juicy in the middle. Are you the lout from Rivia? Yep, I'm that lout. Come with me. You're to be sentenced. To what? To shut it. What am I, the town crier? Hands behind your back. Now let's go, and no funny business. Get ready. Soon all your problems will be solved, once and for all. Do you know where this leads? No. Hope it's the exit, though. You guessed it. The thing is, there are different kinds of exits. Some walk this path to freedom. Others walk it straight into eternity. Which am I headed for? I don't know. Yet one thing is certain. You will never walk this path again. Mark Dubois, you are hereby judged guilty of trampling Alice Valref. The cupbearer's wife while on horseback. The woman's condition is critical. It was an accident. I was riding fast, it's true, but she jumped out in front of me. In light of the above, there can be but one sentence. Death by decapitation. No, I didn't do anything! Help! There must be witnesses! Off with his head. <laughs> Paul, the Witcher, take him to the tower. That's an order. An order's an order. Guess you're not next after all. Follow me. 
You're supposed to follow me. Why do you make me watch that execution? So you'd know this is no alms house for lost orphan boys. Wanted me to think I was next. Enjoy that? Getting a rise out of folk? You guessed it. The harlot's hounds that land here, I detest them. So I do everything in my power so they'll know they're in the clink, not on holiday. I've brought the prisoner, sir. Unbind him and leave us. Greetings, Witcher. Your face doesn't look good. Though, looked even worse last time I saw you. I apply an Arnica extract. I can hardly feel it anymore. But my scars pale in comparison to the fate Siana met with. The fate that was your doing. I trusted you. And how did you repay me? Consider it, Witcher. Why do you think the Duquesa had Siana hidden away to start with? Can you guess? I'm sorry. Might not believe me, but... Couldn't have predicted that turn of events. Certainly never wanted that. Enough. We shall speak of it no more. Guess there's been a decision in my case. Truly? Is that all you care about? Your own hide? Get kinda anxious when my life's on the line. Your life was never threatened. The court considered various punishments. The death sentence was not among them. Wasn't in attendance, so I wouldn't know. You are in Toussaint, where the rule of law holds. We do not allow lynchings here, and every case is analyzed in minutest detail. Not only. Also care how the Duchess feels, for example. And I hope that, unlike you, she doesn't blame this all on me. A court hurt your case, not Anna Henrietta. It was a difficult case to decide. True, you killed the Beast of Beauclair, but you failed to prevent the death of Sylvia Anna, our Duquesa's sister. The facts are as follows. You were hired to kill the Beast. Not only did you fail in that endeavor, but you also caused the death of our Duquesa's sister. Have I missed anything? I'll have you know that were it up to me, you would rot in our dungeon until your dying day. Glad you didn't have the deciding vote then. At any rate, I am not the best person to tell you what was decided in your matter. I'd say the man who worked hardest to tip the scales in your favor should. What are you talking about? What man? Dandelion? Sheesh, Geralt. You look like you've seen a ghost. A ghost wouldn't have surprised me half this much, I promise you. What are you doing in Beauclair? Officially? Visiting Honorietta. That is to say, the Duchess. We're old friends. Ah, but you know that. Unofficially, I'm saving your Heine. You? You're a persona non grata in Toussaint. Undesirable. Didn't stop me from risking my skin for you. In my book, friendship is all that matters. Well, friendship and love. And art. Oh, and wine. How'd you even know I was in prison? Regis came to see me right after they locked you up. I mean, Regis, right? <laughs> Can you believe that? To come back after... Amazing. He told me everything, and naturally, I couldn't possibly leave you to rot in there. Take it I'm free, thanks to you. How'd you manage it? Oh, I have my ways. Took a little persuasive logic. Blended in some deft rhetoric, then added a generous pinch of charm. And voila! You're free! Mind being just a little more specific? Geralt, you were summoned here to hunt down and destroy the Beast of Beauclair. You undeniably did just that. Facts spoke for themselves, by and large. Then why the hell did they throw me in prison? Specifically? Due to the Duchess's sister's untimely demise. But I convinced Honorietta to treat that as a separate matter. After all, your contract said nothing about protecting Siana. Thus, you will not only keep your vineyard, 
but you'll also receive a portion of the remuneration you're owed for killing the Beast of Beauclair. Dandelion, you're one clever little rascal. I'd do anything for a friend. But just so you know, it wasn't easy. In fact, it was pretty damn hard. Duchess was so furious, I think she even forgot she'd banished me from Beauclair. For life! All she could do was scream that you'd never set foot outside that dungeon again. How'd you get her to take a fresh look at things? I appealed to the faultless intentions that guided you. To your reputation, your accomplishments, and... Well, ultimately, she changed her mind, and you're free. Never wants to see you again, but... Even got her to leave your vineyard with you. You won't get a copper of your promised reward, but you'll keep your estate. Dandelion, you are a regular master of diplomacy. Thanks. Listen, you do whatever needs doing, but I've got to get to the cemetery. Honorietta's in bad shape with Sienna dead. Some folk forget that under the ducal regalia, she's just an ordinary woman who's lost a loved one. Been meaning to ask you, how's Priscilla? All right. Recovering steadily from the horror she's been through. So, you two, you're still... Of course we are! How could you even think it was otherwise? No idea. Just within the realm of possibilities. But please be careful not to lead Anna Henrietta on. Suggest you've come here for any reason beyond getting me out of my predicament. The bond between the Duchess and myself is one of pure friendship, nothing more. Now, off to console a friend in need. All right. See you later. See you, Geralt. Off we go. You'll collect your things at the door. Follow me to the exit. Open the gate. Your things are past the first gate. I believe I don't really give a peek. Don't smile so wide. Someone's liable to see. Could mean trouble. I can't help myself. Just so glad to see you. Glad to see you too, my vampire friend. Thanks for getting Dandelion to come out. It was nothing. True, he was not at first terribly eager to face the Duchess, but I managed to persuade him his person was indispensable. Well played. Dandelion loves being indispensable. Yet he so rarely is, poor man. What did you do while I... Uh... While you vegetated in that correctional facility? I used the time to think. Wish to know what I thought about. Of course. The relationship between two numbers. Declaf's four victims and the five chivalric virtues. As you've no doubt noted, there's a difference of one. Mean to tell me, after all we've figured out, that you now believe in the whole five virtues punished theory? Belief's got nothing to do with it. It's cold logic, deduction. Siana went to great lengths to make folk believe the beast was punishing those who betrayed the virtues. Were I in her shoes, I'd make sure the number of victims matched. Are you not at all curious who was meant to be the fifth? If I say yes, what then? Then you'll come with me for another chat with the boot black. You see, I've learned he delivered the notes to Detlaf. Our search starts with him. Fine, see what he has to say. Could use a good walk, work out the kinks if nothing else. Come then. Guess it wouldn't hurt to talk to him, but let's meet there. Wanna look around town first, work out some kinks. Acceptable, I suppose. I shall await by the boot black stand.
Now what I say to that, Regis? Those murders don't interest me anymore. A drink, though. That's another matter. Then I invite you to join me for one. I'm certain to dig up a flask. Or two. Or three. I agree completely, young man. Lois is clearly the more decent than Lois. Isn't that the truth? I noticed it myself. But Clay? Now that's a real pickle to clean off. What big... Oh! It's the chap with the swords. Sir! You look like some beast ate you up then spat you out. Are you here for a spiffing? Boots make the man, they say. Step on up! Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on then. I'm a proponent of free speech and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the soles that wear them. Clean boots, clean soles. A fine slogan. How's business? Well enough, I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. Man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young, got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Why didn't you tell us this before, when we first talked? You didn't ask about beggars now, did you? Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. It was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh! I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Where'd they get the letters? They pick them up? Get them from someone? I don't know. They'd come, hand me a letter, and walk away. I asked no questions. Geralt. Remember what they looked like? Of course. I have a mind like a steel trap, as I said. They were ragged, unshaved. Their clothes were tattered. As to their boots, well, I mentioned that already. Geralt, allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that boot shine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, then right. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. We must visit the shelter. Look around inside. You've to move your little camp elsewhere, got it? You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it. Only to tire our lips, we'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm, please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Scram! Decent folk live here. The shelter, them living here, bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballard. Another defender of the poor, fighter for justice. Damn nuisance. We for our women and young folk living next door, when even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Decent folk you mention. Mean yourselves. Why? Do you doubt it? Hell yes. Hear that, Atua? He poking insults us. On our own turf. 
We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. Take a hint. Come, time to go. Are you well, my friend? What? What happened? Well, I saw your opponents gain the upper hand, so I took the liberty of jumping in. They shan't bother us anymore. We can now have a calm conversation with the proprietor. I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beggars. I do not oppose going elsewhere were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. What is this place? Poor house? You could call it that. They come here to rest and eat a hot meal. You help them, why? Because they need help. Need some information. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Garl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your, uh, wards supposed to meet him recently or soon? Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. You can question them yourselves. Sure all your usual beggars will be here? They're not obliged to come, of course. But they rarely find a decent meal elsewhere. So, almost all in the area eat here. Thanks. We'll wait. Nice of you to let us. My dears, I have a matter to address before I serve this soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief. For if you draw it out, your soup will go cold, and we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeal? You were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. Given a letter and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. Thank you. Who else? I got the one too. Uh, gave it to the boot black. Freshy, he got one. But he can't tell you, as he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas. It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over, or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. I need the letter. It's very important. It's no use to you anymore. But I was to deliver it personally. Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightening. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. This man helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. All right, take it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there. Damn it. 
What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. I... I must say, even I did not expect this. This time you will see to our Duquesa. It seems we underestimated Siana rather grossly. Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Siana planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtues their only link. Enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Siana, even as she had those she despised killed off one by one, leaving the Duchess for last. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons. Most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions, ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Siana murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? From an inborn penchant for evil? Yes, yes, and yes. All those make sense, and none are mutually exclusive. Can only guess what drove Siana. Luckily, Anna Henrietta is safe now. I believe we may dare to assume so. Siana's death was also the death of the Duchess's only natural rival. She is in no danger, for now. Pretty rare thing for a ruler. What do we do now? Now we drink. Unless, that is, you feel a witchly duty to see the Duchess and tell her what we just learned. Let's go. Haven't had a drink in weeks. Besides, doubt that information would do the Duchess any good. <laughs> Why not admit you're simply afraid of her reaction? She already locked me up once. Can you blame me? I cannot. At times one must abandon grand politics for a bit of simple pleasure. I believe this is one of those times. <sighs> Think this might be something Anna Henrietta should know. As you wish. I shall await you at Mer La Chaiselon, a mug of Mandrake brew to keep me company. Not coming with? No. After the horror Detlaf brought down upon the city, and in light of Siana's death, I think it wiser not to appear at the palace. Probably right. See you later then. Before heading to the palace, you might wish to see if Anna Henrietta is not at the city cemetery. She spent a great deal of time at her sister's grave these last days. I did not think you'd show again. Need I remind you? The Duquesa's sister lies dead due to your negligence. Yet still, you have the gall to come. Wouldn't have come if I didn't have to. Promise you that. But I've learned something. Something that might interest Anna Henrietta. Hmm. Forgive me if I lend no credence to your word. Found a letter Siana wrote. To the murderer. Hmm. Very well. You may enter. But I make no promises as regards the Duquesa. She mourns her sister in the Ducal Crypt. Viscount de Lettenhof is with her. Remember, my dear Honorietta, despair is like a stormy sky. Sooner or later, the sun must drive away the clouds. That is easy for you to say. The one murdered was not your sister. My life hasn't exactly been a bed of roses. Uh, true, my sister wasn't murdered. Don't even have a sister, actually. But many times I've lost. Ugh, unimportant. Your Grace. The impudence you must harbor to come in here after all that's happened. Calm down. I'm sure Geralt's got a very good reason. Right, Geralt?
Didn't come here to upset you, milady. Just found this letter and thought you, if anyone, ought to read it. Know what it says. You are not one to tell me what I should or should not do. Siana wrote it. To the murderer. Before you start dumping accusations on me, think you should know something. Siana? She was a vicious, wicked woman. Who are you to tell me who my own sister was? I'm the man you hired to investigate the Beast of Beauclair. And I found a letter your sister wrote to the murderer. Really? Maybe you should read it then. It could be important. You read it, Dantelai. Aloud to me. This time you must see to our Duquesa. Anna Henrietta knows nothing of empathy. Her heart is cold. This shard of ice you must tear from her breast. My sister could never have written that. Got proof she did. No. I don't believe you. I don't believe it. Someone seeks to blacken her in my eyes. I won't allow it. There, there, Honorietta. Don't get upset. The letter is vile. It's slander. You must destroy it. Do you hear? No one else must ever read it. Ever! Consider it done. And you, out! Get out of here! This is all you're doing! Be gone, hear me! I never wish to see you again! I shall never believe she did this. She was not capable. This is an outrage, Dandelion. Tell him it's not true. Tell him it's a dirty lie. Geralt, get out of here, please. The Duchess, she needs to be alone. Met a whole rogues gallery. All interesting folk in prison. Can't say I'm eager to ever see any of my cellmates again, though. Of all the places to wind up behind bars, Toussaint was a good choice. No other ruler I know would change their mind so quickly. Especially given it wasn't about just anyone, but the Duchess's very own sister. As to her enlightened highness, didn't go great. Got the full kaleidoscope of her emotional states. Spun through it at an impressive pace, too. Am I to understand she didn't throw her arms about you and shower you with thanks for saving her from her murderous sister? Got that right. I don't blame her, though. Luckily, Dandelion was there to smooth things over. Somewhat. As you know, I had little sympathy for Siana. Nonetheless, I very much regret I could not keep her safe. To you, her ultimate fate, does it still bring on the occasional pang of regret? Yep. Still. Well then. Drink up. Always seemed a very complex creature to me, by your very nature. Not one to go in for simple methods like drinking your worries away. I fear there are worries for which, quite simply, there is no other medicine. Siana's dead. Deadlaf's gone too. Beauclair's free of the beast. Whichever of them it was. Beauclair seems safe now, though I'm still left wondering. I mean, Deadlaf's alive. Think Anna Henrietta's still in danger? No. He had a score to settle with Siana. By his reckoning, he did just that. He has no reason to attack anyone else. Or to remain in Beauclair any longer. Sure hope so. Though in his boots I'd regret having to go. Place is just plain beautiful, damn it. Whatever you say about Siona, you gotta admit, she was unbending. That she was. I do admit it. Though in her case, 
It would have been better if she had been a tad more mm, philosophical, pausing from time to time to reflect on the propriety of her actions. True. No, it's hard. A tender subject, but wanted to thank you for helping me with Detloff. You need not. Hate to pry, but why? Did I decide to stand against him? Ah, uh, I felt rage had consumed him completely. He'd crossed the line beyond which he could no longer control himself. He'd have remained the beast, irrational, unfit to reason with, incapable of experiencing any of the emotions which, for simplicity's sake, we shall call human. I do not wish such a life upon anyone, and especially not on a friend. I understand. Forgive me, but I doubt you truly do, and it's very difficult to explain. Let's say I felt the solution I chose to be better for all involved, and for Detlaf himself most of all. How do you find my personal brew? Not too strong. Just right. Credit the local mandrake of the Alrauna Diabolus variety for that. The tubers which grow in this area's volcanic soil have an altogether unique flavor profile and display a remarkably uncommon dark brown tint. Fascinating. All I can say is this batch turned out excellent. Indeed. It might be wise to stockpile some roots for the future. Would you care to accompany me? You decide to go root picking now? It's dark out. Ah, oh, Geralt. Even were I generously to assume it had simply slipped your mind that I'm a vampire and thus need no light to see, I'd never believe you had also forgotten that you likewise have absolutely no trouble seeing in the dark. So, shall we? If you think it's a good idea, let's go. But I think you might be forgetting one thing. Fresh mandrake root of this variety is highly toxic, even to a witcher. Ah, not a problem. I never forget matters of safety and hygiene in alchemy. Here, gloves and a mask. Don them, and you shall be in no danger. Thanks. Right then, let's go. This moonlight makes me oh so dreamy. Penny for your thoughts. Let me guess. Succubus twins? Uh, no, I was thinking about... Oh, how anything can look interesting when properly lit. Even an old necrophage corpse? You've not an ounce of refinement in you, have you? Sucker go. Won't be easy to track down. He's a vampire after all. Damn it, where'd you go? Regis! What I had to do! Say, they called you a traitor. Alas, we have a very simple code of honor, we vampires. So simple you might call it trivial. Either one is with us, unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances, or... Won't let it go, will they? They will not. Fortunately, we have another rule. An unwritten one, and just as trivial as the first. It is neatly summarized in the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is why I must leave Toussaint. For a vastly long time, most like. Yeah, I get it. Oh, let us make for my camp. 
I have an overwhelming desire to have another drink. Mmm, supreme bouquet. Firm, defined beginning, then developed gently, rising to a, a startling finish. Don't you think? Not much of a connoisseur. Then it is high time you started your education. After all, the Corvo Bianco vineyard is now yours. By the way, I left a gift for you at your new home, on the nightstand. <laughs> Thanks. Mind telling me what it is? <sighs> a trifle. That will nonetheless be useful should you need mutagens. Incidentally, have you thought about what you'll do with your prize? Shall you hang your swords over the mantle and take to pruning vines? Know what? Think I just might. Come on now, don't laugh. Maybe not today or tomorrow. But one day I'll want to see what it's like. To just wake up every day in my own bed. Oh, stop, please. Sounds so sentimental my fangs have begun to hurt. Then what? Will you begin writing your memoirs like Dandelion? No, just not the life for me. Sure, might stop by there occasionally, stay the winter, fill up on wine. But I'd rather keep moving. It's not a choice being a witcher. And once you are one, you're one for life. You can't just step off the path. Besides, plenty of work left for me in the world. Ghouls aren't gonna kill themselves. Hey, managing a vineyard. Wouldn't happen to be something you've always wanted to try, would it? <laughs> I'm flattered, Geralt, I am. But no, I too was not made to saunter about in a robe and slippers. Rather droll, isn't it, that each time we meet, something harrowing must happen? Uh, don't really know yet. Might find the life of a hard-working vintner too tempting one day. Or maybe I'll just stick to the path, go on roaming, staring up at the stars after laying my bedroll at the roadside. Ah, roadsides, bedrolls, and the sky above. I sense some poetry coming on. Which, of course, brings to mind Dandelion. I can remember a night, not too far from here, if I'm not mistaken. We hid in a cave while a blizzard raged all about. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? we just set off to rescue Ciri from Vilgefortz. Oh, our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly. But that first stay in Beauclair, far calmer than this one. Seemed like a land straight out of a fairy tale back then. Its sole problem, cellars too small to accommodate all that wine. Appearances, Geralt. Appearances, like Mamoons and Dopplers, deceive. So what did become of Vilgefortz? Killed him. Sure wasn't easy, though. What about you? Any idea where you'll go? Distance is of the essence. I thought I might venture south. Nilfgaard? Why ever not? The Nilfgaardians are a modern society. None there believe in vampires anymore. This fact alone could be very useful to one wishing to remain incognito. Hmm. Interesting point of view. What about you now? Got a plan? I do. I must find Detlaf. Help him. I certainly owe him that much. Vampire friendships. Clear rules. Must be nice. Do I detect a note of sarcasm? Not at all. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer? So we shall, my friend. We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do.